Good morning and welcome to a live strategy session with the Doula Toolbox. My name is Rebecca. So let me adjust myself here. My name is Rebecca and today I want to talk about how to be intentional with your time as a doula with an unpredictable schedule. So this is something that came up in a coaching call that I had a couple weeks ago with an amazing doula. Um, it was just one part of the call, but I thought it would be a great strategy to share with you um, because that particular doula found it really helpful. And as we're kind of rolling into this new year and figuring out the best way to reach our goals and manage our times, I just thought this was great timing for this topic. So how to be intentional with your time as a doula with an unpredictable schedule. We're going to cover three different suggestions or strategies. So number one is going to be don't let your client choose your availability and we'll dive into each of these a little bit more number two creating an intentional to-do list and number three giving yourself grace for when life happens or you know client stuff comes up and throws you off of the schedule that you set for yourself so let's dive into number one don't let your client choose your availability so the overall kind of framework of all of this is going to be creating time blocks for you to get things done with intention, right? So the number one thing that I think, especially when you're rolling into your business as a new doula, is to feel like you need to be accommodating to your client no matter what, right? So maybe this sounds familiar when you're going to um, book different consultations or your prenatals or whatever it might be when you're booking those things into your schedule oftentimes you'll just kind of put the question to your client to say well what works for you and then you're kind of left putting it into where you know it works for the client as opposed to you having set times that work for you and giving your client the option of choosing between two to three different times so the way that we kind of worked through this on the coaching call was to really sit down um, at the end of the month and look ahead and see what's going to work for you. So this might change from month to month, or you might find something that you're comfortable sticking with for a few months at a time. So finding that space and time kind of at the end of a month, looking ahead and looking at what blocks of time you have available to be able to book people in for. And then also having those times so that they are dedicated to that. And then if they don't get filled up, then you also can use that time for something else. But the idea is to intentionally create those time blocks that are just for client work and then if they don't get filled up, you can kind of look at your to-do list that you created for yourself and make use of that time in another way. So many doulas will use online scheduling systems. So maybe it's something that they only have for themselves. So maybe you might look at using your Google Cal and just like blocking in those times or you might be at the point where you have a website and you're able to attach an online scheduling system, in which case you would wanna update your availability so that your clients just do the booking all on their own. So if you're not there yet and you're working with your own schedule or your own planner or something like that, then when you're booking a client in, you can look and see, you know, maybe even choose a color and highlight those particular time blocks. And you can look and see and say, okay, I'm available on this day and time or this day and time or this day and time. So you're still giving your client that flexibility, but you're not kind of blocking yourself into being available only when they're available. Does that make sense? So number one, not letting your client choose your availability, but you kind of maintaining your control. And that's difficult, especially when you're just starting your doula business out because you just want to be fully available. You want to be fully accessible, but setting yourself up for that could lead to just chaos and stress in the future, right? So if you kind of buckle down on that and create that boundary for yourself right away, then you're going to have control over your own schedule moving forward in your business. So the second strategy I want to talk about is creating an intentional to-do list. So we talk a lot about time blocking and kind of looking at your schedule and putting in the times where you know you can sit down and dedicate to working on your business. 
But the thing with those time blocks is that we want to make sure that you know what you're doing, right? Because oftentimes we will sit down and go, okay, I have this time to work on my business, but what do I want to do? I've got this massive list. So where do I start? And then we end up kind of wasting time trying to figure out what to use the time for or what's the best way that to use the time on that particular day. So in this case, we suggest, again, finding that time and making this a method of operation where once a week you sit down and you kind of brain dump or write out all the stuff that is swimming around in your head that you feel like needs to get done. And then we're going to look at that list and go, okay, what is a priority on this list? Because realistically, we know that we can't just get everything done all at once. But if we have intentional blocks of time and we kind of have our list set up in priorities that we know when we sit down, we, I know, say for example, Thursday from one to three o'clock, I have dedicated time for my business and I've taken the time to kind of make that list and know what is going to be the best use of that particular time? What's going to get me closer to finishing a goal or achieving a goal? Um, what needs to get done in terms of maybe staying caught up um, or batching my work or so on and so forth, right? So knowing and kind of taking that time once a week is a great practice to kind of get it all out. And then maybe kind of when you're ending your working day every day, you're going to be able to sit down and go, okay, so I know what tomorrow, this is what my time blocks look like. Here's my list of things that I've kind of dumped out and I know that I want to work on this week. So every single day, just to kind of clear your head and finish up with what you're working on. Um, you're going to be able to kind of sit down and look and go, okay, I'm, uh, these are the things that I want to work on today. Tomorrow I know I've got a two or three hour block of time. And so you can just kind of pencil in the things that you plan on working on during those time blocks. This way you're kind of sitting down, you're grabbing all the stuff you know you need for a particular task and you're just getting to work instead of sitting there and thinking, what do I have to do? What should I work on? So on and so forth. Hey Lisa, I see you. I'm going to get to questions just as soon as I get through this last point here. All right. So number three, the last strategy here we're going to talk about today is giving yourself grace. And this is a tough one. And I know this for a fact this week actually has already been a bit of a tricky week for me. I had a whole bunch of stuff scheduled for myself for a Monday afternoon. And I ended up having to take my daughter to the children's emergency room for a broken arm. It's nothing serious. She's totally okay. But that took a huge block of time out of my schedule that I had a lot of stuff planned to get done. So we have to be able to give ourselves grace for that, especially you as a doula. If you're a birth doula, then you know you have an unpredictable schedule. But the benefit of doing um, strategy one and strategy number two that we just talked about is knowing that you have it all listed. So kind of when you get out of that thing that distracted you or took you away from working on your list and working during your time blocks, you're going to be able to go back to that list and go, okay, so this is what I wasn't able to get done because this came up. Um, and then you can kind of reevaluate it and think, okay, is there anything that I need to get done still? Is there anything that I need to find time to, you know, squeeze it in this week? Or you can also look at it and say, okay, so this happened. It was out of my control. So what can I do to kind of pivot or reconfigure or whatever that might be? So for an example, for myself, this week that looked like having to change a launch date. So I had something planned to kind of go out tomorrow to the whole Dual Toolbox community, um, but it's just not going to happen. So that's something that I had to kind of just sit with and give myself grace for. It was a totally unplanned thing that pulled me away from work, but I still have my kind of checklist of things that I have to work through. And I was able to look at that and realistically and logically say, this isn't going to happen without totally like <laughs> stressing myself out. Um, and it's just not worth that. So because I did all that work before and I know what I need to get done, I was able to look at it, give myself grace and say, okay, it's not the end of the world if I don't kind of get this thing done and opened up tomorrow and just kind of pivot on my plans a little bit and feel okay about it.
So I'm just going to kind of look over here. Lisa's got a question, trying to get more scheduling done because it's hard. I suck at organizing my time and now I started a relationship and I'm finding time way more fast. You're finding time way more fast? It is tricky organizing your time, but you know what? It's something that I've done to myself before um, is feeling like, okay, I need to like reconfigure my schedule or create this like structured system. And I try to go from like, I don't want to say nothing, but I try to go and like do it all at once. So I would suggest if you feel like you quote unquote suck at scheduling your time, I would suggest maybe taking baby steps with that, right? So a little bit at a time, get into the habit of it and then maybe add more. So this really comes to um, creating methods of operation for yourself. And so turn that phone off. Um, it's really about creating methods of operation for yourself, but you don't necessarily have to go from zero to like, you know, all out scheduling all at once, right? So start small, just add in little, little bits of time. Uh, one thing that Tasha recommends that I need to start doing myself as well, but she actually has timers on her phone that remind her like, okay, so this is my planning time. So every Friday she gets an alert on her phone that says, stop what you're doing and sit down and plan out your coming week, right? So she likes doing it on a Friday night so that she's kind of got it all out of her head and planned and then, you know, the weekend's open and she's not thinking about it. And then some people like to stop on Sunday night and look at the week ahead and do that. So it's really going to be what works best for you. But I highly recommend if you feel like you're not good at it and you're trying to go from like zero to everything, back it up and take some baby steps and just start putting in you know, little methods of operation. Once you've got that down, then you can add another one and add another one. So um, going faster, I totally get that, Lisa. Um, so if any of you have any questions just while we're on here still, just to recap what we just covered, we are talking about how to be intentional with your time as a doula, especially with an unpredictable schedule. And we talked about Number one, not letting your client choose your availability. So you kind of being in the driver's seat there and not being like fully accommodating. You want to be accommodating, but you also have to remember that you want to build your business into your life, not your life around your business, right? And that's something that I have to constantly remind myself of. Um, and it's a tricky one because we want to be successful and we want to serve and, and likely most doulas are all people pleasers and you just really want to help. But we always have to remember that we're not going to be as helpful if we're wearing ourselves out and running around trying to be accommodating to everybody else, right? So the key there is to have some flexibility and to give those options, but not run yourself ragged doing it, right? So I realized that if I pushed myself to get this content done that I needed, that I had planned to have done by tomorrow, it's not going to be the quality work that I want to put out. So it's better for me to wait on it and give myself a few extra days to get it done and get it done the way that I want it to be done and delivered to you guys. So Number two, creating an intentional to-do list. So when you're going to the effort of creating time blocks for yourself, you wanna make sure you know what you're going to be doing in those time blocks so that you don't just sit down and think, okay, I've got this time, now what do I need to work on? What's the thing that's gonna move the needle in my business? Um, but rather you'll have that list of things that you need to do that week and you can sit down and you can just dive right into it and make the most out of that time and be super intentional with it. And then last but not least, giving yourself grace because life happens, business happens, you guys are in the business of kind of being available and being on call. So you can't put so much pressure on yourself to think like, oh, I had this stuff planned to get it done and now I didn't get it done and now I'm behind. You just have to trust and know that you've done the work, you've got your list, you know kind of what you can come back to, and all you have to do is look at that, make any changes or pivots that need to be made, and just feel okay about that. So that is it for today, you guys. This was a live strategy session with the Doula Toolbox. Um, if you like this video, please like it, comment, share it. Hopefully it can be helpful to you and some of your other 
you know, other doula coworkers and friends. Um, last but not least, for more tips and encouragement and just announcements, make sure you're on the doula toolbox email list. I will make sure that I link to that in the notes um, so that you can make sure that you're always alerted when we have any kind of free training or free tips or resources going on, as well as any programs that we announce in the future. So I'll link to that in the notes and I hope that you all have a lovely day. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye-bye.